This is the ADAU1701 uh, kernel board from Sure Electronics. Uh, it's uh, trademarked Wondom. Top W O N D O M. Whether you can see that or not, no, not really. Um, but it comes from SureElectronics.com. The board has a uh, DSP digital signal processor on the back. That's the ADAU 1701. Uh, and on the front of the board, we have a variety of connectors. So we have the uh, expansion port here that allows us to uh, take the audio to the interface board. A power board point here, which is a US mini USB. This is the programming port. There's a reset button in the bottom. There's some expansion ports top and bottom. On the left hand side we have four potentiometers which are used for uh, maybe used for controlling things within our program. There's a switch on the left hand side which will always be in the up position or the one position. We never, never change the position of that switch. Other boards I have is the audio interface board which has a 10-way connector which connects to the um, kernel board via a wire link and there's some RCA connectors and 3.5 millimeter jack connections as well for stereo input and output. Now I've marked these 1 and 0 or I and O so that I know which ones are input and output without having to turn the board over and read the very small writing. So that's that done. The other board I have is the USB interface, uh, which has a USB port, which has, um, is a data port, and also the programming port for the kernel board, which again has a matching socket on the kernel, and a wire interface between the two. So having got those three boards, the first thing we need to do is to make sure that this board actually works. It comes pre-programmed with some uh, software, uh, which is available from uh, the Shure Electronics website. Uh, so you can download that and reprogram it just in case you're worried about losing it. But you needn't worry because programming it is actually really easy. But the first thing we're going to do is make sure it works. So uh, what I want to do is to take this board and this board and connect them together using the wire link supplied. So I'll pop that in there. Pop that in there. those two boards are now connected you'll notice the wires are twisted uh, that's because they can sit on top of each other like that in that configuration uh, and the wires are then straight but I'm not going to do that today I need to apply some power to the board uh, so I have a USB cable here and I plug the USB cable into the board and as I do that You'll notice a little green LED comes on to show that the board is at least got power on it. I then need to connect an audio output, such as a speaker, like a computer speaker, to the output, an audio source to the input. And when I do that, we can hear the music playing. So we know that the board is functioning. If I press the reset button on the board that music will stop briefly as the program is reloaded and then start again so that shows that the board is functioning. Now I need to go to the uh, software which is Sigma Studios from Analog Devices sorry Sigma Studio not Studios all one word so let's have a look at that Okay, when you um, open Sigma Studio, which is a free program from Analog Devices, um, this is the first screen that you come across. If you go to the File menu um, and click on New Project, you have two windows, a toolbox window and a hardware configuration window. We need to configure our hardware and we need to tell the uh, software what we're using. So 
uh, we select an ADAUU 1701, left click and drag. We also need to select an E squared prom, so left click and drag to the workspace. And we need to interface these two with the USB. So we go down to the communication channels and we'll take the USB I and connect the blue diamonds to the green diamonds. Simple left click and drag. Okay, and so that's the connection, that's the hardware connection made. You'll notice that the uh, background behind here is uh, red currently. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to connect the um, USB power and data line to the USB interface board. So this is my interface board. And I'll plug the USB cable in. Having plugged the USB cable in, if I now go back to the other screen, you can see that that um, red background has now turned green. If I unplug the cable again, it becomes red. Plug the cable in, it goes green, which is what we're looking for. We now have to connect the um, interface cable. So we'll plug that into there. And before I plug it into the kernel board, I'm going to just play the music again. Because as I plug it in, the audio should continue to play. Which it hasn't. So I need to unplug that. Unplug it in again. Sometimes it takes a couple of goes to get that right. Depends which order you plug the cables in. Um, but you'll get to a situation where everything's connected together. The background behind USB will be green, which means the wire is connected. And we have also now music playing through the board, so the board is working. So that's the situation we need to get to, where everything is connected and everything is working. Now I'll just turn that music off again for a second. And let's go and have a look at Sigma Studios and give us ourselves a uh, the first program. Uh, and the first program we're going to use um, is just simply to connect the inputs to the outputs. You'll notice there are two windows here. There's the hardware configuration which we've been using, and that's all working okay. The E squared prom and the AADU AU A1701 are all connected to the USB interface, which is good. So now we need to go to the schematic window and actually draw a configuration for the processor to use. On the left hand side here you can see this is all changed and these are all our DSP tools. We'll select from the I.O. menu an input. Again left click and drag. There are two audio uh, analog to digital uh, inputs on the device and these are shown here by the blue diamonds. We need an output, and there are four of these on the device. We're just going to use one for now. Okay. And the blue diamonds represent outputs on the on the chart here, uh, and the green ones are inputs. So we can always connect a blue one to a green one. So this essentially is connecting the input of the processor to the output of the processor. Um, so all we have is the direct connection between the two. On the top line here, there's a little box called Link Compile Download. Incidentally, to the right hand side here, we've got the uh, sampling frequency, which can be changed if you want to change the sampling frequency of the project, which always defaults to 48 kilohertz. You can select from the drop down list different speeds. Um, we'll leave it at 48k for the time being. Um, so we want to essentially um, build this project and download it to the DSP. So I'm going to play the music so I can hear what's happening.
Nothing apparently. <laughs> Okay, so what's happened now is I've just downloaded that. You see down in the bottom right hand corner here it says active downloaded. It means that this this program has now been downloaded into the processor and that's what's running. Now if I do that one more time, you hear the audio stops whilst it downloads and then restarts again because the program is running. If I disconnect this, No, I won't do that. Let me reconnect that again. Just going to get an example here of a mute control. And I'm going to reconnect the circuit. Download this new program. Always download the new program when you make a change. Now if I click on the mute button, it stops the music. Click again, it starts, click it stops. Okay, that shows that we have control of the processor from here, remotely. And that's the first program. I'm just going to stop that source. Now if we want to store that program into the processor, you go back to the hardware configuration menu or window, right click on the ADAU1701 and down here you'll see it says write latest compilation to E squared prom. We click on that, click on OK and that writes the compilation to E squared prom. So now we can disconnect everything from the processor and the processor will still function with our new program in it. So that's the end of this first video. That should get you up and running. Um, so the process is to connect the power to the uh, kernel board, uh, connect an audio input and output to check that the board is actually working, then open up the Sigma Studio software, connect the USB port, make sure that the um, USB background goes from red to green, having configured the hardware on the screen. Then plug the USB port into the audio board and make sure everything still works. And then if that doesn't work you have to sort of go back and start again. Um, the switches always all need to be set in the one position and the switches never move. Um, but it is when you plug the USB board into the kernel board sometimes the, the processor stops. So you have to unplug it and plug it back in again and reset the board and fiddle around with it until it works but generally speaking once you've got the hang of it, it, it it's pretty reliable uh, and it, it's not till I started making this video that I actually started having problems with it <laughs> so um, there we go and then you can download your program okay so that's the end of the uh, of the first video the next time we'll add some uh, some actual processing algorithms to the uh, board and see if we can make it uh, do something interesting thank you for watching